Oh yeah, this is more like it. Look at that beautiful clutch. Look at these cute little monkeys right here. Oh, they have so much personality at this size. Look at those tugs. Ooh, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I'm just on a little bit of a snake hunt this morning, but I have a really busy day, so I'm gonna look through really quick, get the idea of how many clutch I have. I'm gonna have to collect those eggs a little bit later because we have a insane day today, starting with an event that's called the Science Olympiad about herpetology. We did a bunch of groups here a few months back. Now there's like this big event on a college camp which we have to take some animals, meet a bunch of kids. It's gonna be absolutely incredible. But first, I definitely have to check everything out at the Reptarium over at BHB. We have a handful of clutches over there. Also gonna check on skinks, see if we have any more baby skinks. And of course, after I just kinda look through the Reptarium, I'm gonna definitely check on Lucy, see how she's doing. Morning, Bella. Take a quick peek here. Oh, nothing. Nothing, still the same as always, no uh, update there. We're definitely gonna give it a couple more days and then I'm gonna go in and at least get her out and just give a feel to her. But right now I still wanna just leave her alone. So I have to get back over to BHB, check some things really quick, then I have to pack up here to head out to this college campus to do this event that's gonna be absolutely amazing. And again, this event is pretty cool. It's supposed to be hundreds, I don't know, maybe even thousands of kids, I have no idea. But it's like a six hour event. Uh, so Lori's gonna have to hold down the fort part of the time because I can only spend the first like three hours there and then I have to get back to the shop because I got tour, have a whole bunch of work to do. So uh, she's excited about having to do it by herself, I'm sure. But, <laughs> but it should be pretty cool. It's not like a paid event. It's just about getting kids excited and maybe they'll come visit the Reptarium and learn a little bit about reptiles. We made it to the college in the event. Uh, definitely thousands of kids here. We have this entire room, which is gonna be crazy. I don't know if a ton of kids are gonna show up or not, but uh, it should be pretty fun. It's kind of weird because we're off like the cafeteria air. So I hope that kids will be able to find us. We just brought a handful of animals just everyone can hold and touch. We can teach them a little bit so uh, we're just gonna get set up I think our first presentation is in about 15 minutes and I think we have to do one every hour that's like 15 minutes long and then kids can meet the animals after that so it should be a blast all the kids are starting to show up we're gonna do that presentation in a minute but just a bunch of things, uh, having a really good time anyone have an idea what this is it's a leopard gecko. You don't know why they call it a ball python. What do you think? Yep, it curls up into a ball. I can't do it. All right, so we did three presentations. I actually have to head back to the zoo. Jessica's actually here to help Lori out. I think they've got two or three more presentations, uh, but I have uh, some tours. I've got to check for eggs and skinks and all kinds of other stuff, so i got to get back on the road. And like I mentioned, that was absolutely bonkers, but what a good time. Lori and Jessica are just wrapping up over there for the next little bit. I've got a tour, then i got to pull eggs, got to check for skinks and just see what else is going on. But for now, let's go ahead and see what's going on with colubrid eggs. First up is actually a Mexican black king snake, and I'm always excited to see Mexican black king snake clutches, obviously, because they're so popular and they're just such incredible animals. Let's see what she has. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Woo, doggy. That is a nice clutch of eggs right here. I'm just going to slowly remove these eggs right here, see if I can get this clump out. Looks like one egg rolled over there. We've got one lonely egg over here, and then we'll get this egg right here. And the ones that rolled around, we'll just candle really quick. We'll get mama out of here. Wow, mama, you look absolutely beautiful. But I tell you what, these Mexican black kings, after they lay, they certainly do look like they really got beat up. But the good thing about colubrid, and in particular when it comes to king snakes, is that as soon as you start feeding them, they just unbelievably get fat again. Because again, that girl's gonna get bred in about a week and a half, two weeks, and she's gonna probably lay a second clutch of eggs here in about five or six weeks. So regardless, we have two, four, six beautiful eggs from a Mexican black king snake. What a way to start the colubrid egg day. I mentioned the other day that the snakes are shedding so much better now that the furnace isn't always running drying the air out. Look at Sunrise's shed right here. Unbelievable. It's been a long time since I've had a large shed. This perfect. I mean, absolutely head to tail. It's unbelievable. And trust me, Sunrise looks gorgeous. Now I am super excited about this next clutch. Actually a pink-eyed leucistic Texas rat snake. And the interesting thing is we bred it to a snow Texas rat snake, which is another albino and aneurythristic animal, but we're not sure that the 
albinos link up or not. Not 100% sure because the pink-eyed leucistic, as you can see here, is just an all-white leucistic snake that has a really pretty clutch of eggs right now. Oh my god, I am so happy to see these eggs look so good. But you can see she's just a leucistic snake with the pink eyes. And we actually bred it to this guy here who's a snow Texas rat, which again is an albino and an anurthristic. And like I said, we don't know if the two albinos link up or not, so we could get all albino Texas rat snakes that are double head for anurthristic and leucistic. I don't know yet. We'll see what hatches. But nevertheless, looks like we have a really good clutch of eggs here. Looks like one little bad egg right here. And a few of these eggs rolled around, so I'll take them and can them real quick. But it looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven good eggs and one bad egg. That is amazing because it's kind of a start of a brand new project. I don't know that anyone's ever bred a snow Texas rat snake to a pink eyed leucistic, so this may be the first clutch. I'm not 100% sure. Regardless, I cannot wait till these guys hatch. I'll just can't at least get these in an egg box and move on. Lori's just back from the Science Olympiad events. How'd the rest go? Because that was crazy. Yeah, it was pretty steady crazy, but uh, it was it was really cool. There's nothing cooler than seeing the kids and the excitement for the animals. Whether it's their first experience with them or people who already love reptiles, either way, it's always a lot of fun. You did the presentations or you and Jessica did them together? I did them. I let Jessica handle the spider part. Okay. Well, that's pretty good. I wish I would have been filming that. I'd love to see how that went, but that was awesome. So I uh, definitely worked hard. I'm just still doing my work here at the shop as well as over at the Reptarium with Taurus. We have about an hour before we open up tonight for the Reptarium, so uh, still a lot to do. I think I've got one more tour and then a whole bunch of busy work to do, so uh, I think Lori deserves a little credit for doing that stuff without me. Definitely a good day for Kalubras. I think I have two or three more clutches. This one being a head butter motley scaleless corn snake. That's actually bred to a motley scaleless. This guy right here, really beautiful male snake, so let's hope we have some good eggs in here and we'll have some good babies coming. Okay, well we definitely have some good eggs. Looks like we've got a couple bad eggs too. Oh yeah, there's a lot of bad eggs in here. This isn't actually that good, but uh, we have some good eggs. It looks like we have a handful of good eggs. I'll get this girl out of here, kind of make sure she's in good shape. Mama looks like she's good. I'll take the shed out. We'll get some water back in with her, and then we'll take a look at this clutch. The first two clutches today were absolutely amazing. You got to have some bad clutches here and there, I guess. So it doesn't look too bad, though. We've got one, two, three, four, and four five eggs. Again, not the best clutch. Considering there's two, four, six, eight bad eggs. So five good eggs, eight bad eggs. Not exactly the ratio I want, but again, not too bad. And this could be some really cool babies because again, there's motley scaleless in there. And then you got butter and all kinds of other stuff. So we'll see what hatches from these last five eggs. They look good at least. So we at least get some good babies, which I never complain about. Let's hope this next clutch is a little bit better. And I hope you guys aren't getting sick of pulling egg clutches because again, for me, it never gets old. This is actually a head butter, head stripe, hep scale that's actually bred to something that's called an orange flow and let me show you this guy right here that was the father he's really gorgeous and this is the orange flow right here just a really beautiful snake but we need to get some good eggs because that last clutch didn't make me real happy let's see oh yeah this is more like it look at that beautiful clutch I told you, those are some pearly whites right there mama you did so good oh I love it when that comes together I'll go ahead and pull the shed again get water back in here get her all set up and ready to go and and let's check and see how many good eggs there are. There's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15 eggs. I tell it, I love that. We have one more clutch of eggs to pull today. Let's hope we end on a good note. Last Colubri clutch of the day is this one right here. And I think that this is gonna go with a little story time too, because this is a Pueblin milk snake right here. Again, we'll take shed out, get water and all of that good stuff. And the reason I say it's gonna be a little story time is because I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Pueblin milk snakes and the whole kind of origin of Pueblin milk snakes, because it's kind of interesting. But first, I wanna see if there's good eggs Oh yeah, there's good eggs. Oh my God, what an absolutely gorgeous clutch. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 11 eggs. That is one of the biggest clutches of Pueblins I've had. I rarely go over eight or nine eggs, so 11 eggs is amazing. But the fact is, is that when the Pueblins first came in, way back in the day, they actually only brought 13 legal animals in. So the vast majority of Pueblin milk snakes that are in the reptile hobby right now are represented with just 13 founder stock animals. So that's how related they are. Now those 13 
16 animals weren't related, so there's lots of gene pull in there. But one of the things that was interesting is you see that, that we pulled this beautiful shed from this pueblo. That original stock often had a little bit of a shedding issue. Now, thyroid is what actually triggers sheds and snakes. So there was some like hyperthyroid thing going on with pueblo milk snakes. They would go blue, go into shed, not shed, go blue, go into shed, not shed, and they get five, six, seven layers, and then ultimately they would die. So in the very beginning of the pueblos being bred here in the country, way back 30 years ago, I would say maybe upwards of 10% of the Puebla milk snakes, believe it or not, would perish from this hyperthyroidism. Now over time, of course, as those animals kind of got called out in the healthiest animals bred and bred and bred, we don't really have that problem with Pueblins, but I just thought I would share that with you because when I started working with Pueblins almost 30 years ago, that was one of the real risks with them is that you could raise them up for a year, year and a half, and just before they're ready to breed, they would go into this hyperthyroid type of shedding and it would always kill them eventually, which is a real bummer. That's pretty much past us now, and it just goes to show you when you start to work with like reduced gene pools with 13 founder stock animals, sometimes the health issues go along with it. So it is always good to have as much gene pool as possible. And I'm happy to say now the problems seem to be doing well. And I'm absolutely ecstatic about this clutch of eggs right here. And that concludes the colubrid egg pulling for the day. And guess what, guys? You are not going to believe this. But yes, we have another litter of blue tongue skinks. I just popped around and I was looking at all these things and I seen a few. Look at these cute little babies right here. Oh my God. I have no idea how many are in here. I can see one, two, three just kind of running around right now. The mama is hiding back here. Oh, there's a fourth over here. Oh my God. I am loving it. I am getting spoiled, guys. Waking up every day and coming in and finding skinks is crazy. Now, this is actually an orange line female bred to a really nice orange male. So the color should be really good. And oh my God, these things. Look at that thing. Look at how they stick their tongue out. This is beautiful. Oh my God. They're so gorgeous. What do you say we just go on a little skink hunk right now and find out how many skinks are in here? Oh my God. There it looks like there's a bunch. There's one there. There is two right over here. Oh, that's okay, little one. There's three right here and one in the water dish right there. There's four. Oh my God. There's a bunch of these guys. There's five over here. Oh my God. Oh, I see one over here. I see one over here. There's six right here. And oh my gosh, look at how beautiful these guys are. Wow, these are an amazing litter. See what else we got? Okay, we got one right here. Oh, is this one a little DOA? Oh no, it's not quite DOA yet. I'm not sure. Now sometimes you can see how it's moving. See how it's moving right there? Sometimes you'll see this with baby skinks where they almost look like they're not alive. And then within a couple hours, they perk back up. So I have a feeling that that one's gonna be okay. I really do. So that's number seven right there. Let's see if we've got any more. Seven is a great start for sure. Here's mama right here. She is beautiful. Beautiful, isn't she? But we'll see if we have any other babies in here at all. Let's see. Just gonna set these babies right over here for a second so I can really look to see if there's anything else in here. Oh, there's another one. There's an eighth one right there. Look at that chunky monkey right there. All right, that's eight. Let's see, do we have any other ones? Eight, eight so far. Let's see. And we keep this hay in here because the moms love to kind of burrow and hide themselves. So it looks like eight might be it, but I'm gonna just look underneath all the paper, make sure that there's nothing. Oh, there's a little infertile ova there. See if there's anything else here. Looks like eight is it. Okay, look at these cute little monkeys right here. Oh, they have so much personality at this size. Look at those tongues. Oh my gosh. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these guys set up and oh my God, eight more beautiful Northern Blue Tongue Skinks that are added to this year's production. Jessica did such a good job breeding these guys. I am so lucky to have a great crew that's doing such an amazing job working with these animals. So uh, there it is guys, I, I, I'm on cloud nine. I am literally on cloud nine. And it's that time of the night. Let's Let's go ahead and open up the Reptarium and have some fun. Hey guys, how are you? Hey, come on in guys, how are you? Hey, come on in, come on We're in. We're back. <laughs> oh, yeah, come on in, have a good time. Hi guys, hi. How are you? Hi, welcome, welcome. Hi, how are you? Having a great time as always. Been open for about a half hour or so. Lots of people cruising in as always. The thing, again, I always say is I love the fact that so many families are coming and just kind of enjoying themselves. Uh, Jessica always gives this corner where she has pretty a night fury joke around and stuff like that. Bruce, of course, is in the rack. And over here, we got Bella down over here. He's doing a bunch of spider stuff over here. Elvis has been out. I think Elvis might be out now. So we're having an absolutely amazing night. This is just like a dream come true every time we're open.
as we are wrapping up the day here at the Rep Carum, you guys had an eventful day. You came from Atlanta. Uh, you got pooped on by Toothless. Uh, you guys uh, had a great time. But the biggest thing that they did today, I think the achievement that I'm the most proud of you for is Krispy Kreme. <laughs> right? Yes. They yes. brought Krispy Kremes. Uh, you guys are forever part of the crew. We love you guys so much. And with that said, I'm going to end the vlog. Wish you guys an amazing day. Tell you guys that I love you. Be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.